Hey folks, so I thought for today I might indulge you with a rambly video. Although, truth be told, I'm really indulging myself with a rambly video. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, things have been doing pretty well as of late for me personally. Uh, thanks to, you know, my new job and new uh, new sort of way of life, as it were. So uh, thank you guys for uh, for catching up with me on things like social media and on live streams and so forth. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd let you know in a video that things are going things are going well. So, uh, but I, th I had a few hours spare, so I thought I might put a video together that I've been thinking of putting together for quite some time. Now, just before I get into that, I've got to do a bit of shameless self-promotion because there are some of you guys that probably still don't know that uh, although I only make videos on this channel on rare-ish occasions nowadays, uh, I actually still do quite a lot of streaming over on Twitch, so you can go to twitch.tv forward slash chrisware. However, if you're not a fan of Twitch, uh, you can also catch the live streams over on my gaming channel, which is youtube.com slash gaming with werewolves. I'll put links to those down in the description below, but the streams are mirrored, so you can either watch on YouTube or you can either watch on Twitch. Um, it's entirely up to you. They work uh, almost sort of parallel to each other exactly, so I uh, don't feel that there's necessarily a preference to one over the other. Uh, also, by the way, I've started a podcast. Now, it's a non-technical podcast, so I know a number of you guys will not be interested, but if you are interested in hearing me uh, chat more about just just you know more randomy stuff more general uh, general banter then uh, yeah over on my project chronicle channel um, which I will of course link to down in the description below uh, yeah me and some friends have just put together a weekly podcast which is admittedly not very good but we enjoy making it so much that it's really more for us than it is for anyone else um, but that is, uh, that's, you know, one of the pleasures of content creation when, uh, when you don't have, when money doesn't hang in the balance, basically, and and that's quite good. It, it's almost sort of reinvented content creation on the internet for me these days. Is that now that I sort of demonetized everything, I just make the content that I want to make, completely irrespective of whether or not it's, um, you know, going to be popular. It just completely is a non-factor for me anymore, and it's massively liberating. So, um, I know that a lot of people have said to me, Chris, don't bother unmonetizing because it's affecting free money and all that kind of stuff you know um, but in, in reality whether or not we like it money guides our decisions anyway and to be absolutely unequivocally and unquestionably free from that has definitely led me in more interesting and, and enjoyable directions so um, it's not a privilege that everyone can afford themselves but I'm going to take full advantage of uh, of the fact that it's afforded to me so, um, and also, like, I, might, I mean, I might sort of mix up some of the content I even do on this channel from time to time. I mean, I've done a, I talked about flags. That was a lot of fun to make. I talked about, uh, I did some tea reviews. Tea reviews are really fun to make as well. I might even do book reviews. Like, I've always wanted to do a, 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 a review on this, a butler's guide to table manners. It's, I, I don't know why it's sort of like got the National Trust up here. I, I, maybe they were fundraising and this is the, the book they were selling. <laughs> It's really good. It's an old an old book about all these kind of things like how to properly uncork wine, how to properly hold your uh, eating utensils, how to tie a tie, what to wear to what different types of party, all that kind of stuff. It's a little bit tongue in cheek, it's a little bit funny because it's it's such an old fashioned book, but in you know, but it's it actually has some like um, interesting ideas in there as well. So it's uh, it's 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 a fun read regardless of whether or not you're the kind of person to wear a suit or you're more at home in a hoodie, you know, it's it's um it's just a, it's, it's it's an amusing book and I really quite enjoy it. I've got loads of amusing books on uh, on my shelf because I enjoy amusing books. Anyway, so today's video, uh, how long are we in now? Oh, three nearly 4 minutes. And, uh, and I've still not got to what this video is actually about. If I was another type of YouTuber, this video would be pretty much over at this point. But not me, no, I'm going to blither on some more. So this video is sort of a video response of sorts. Um, as many of you guys know, uh, HexDSL, whose podcast I've been on uh, a few times now, um, has uh, an interesting opinion that is not always most well received by the free and open source software community uh, about free and open source games. And today I'd like to share a few thoughts of mine. I know that I've done videos about this subject matter before, but this is uh, in essence a sort of an old school response video to a video that Hex put out with Drew. Um, and uh, it's uh, worth watching. I'll link to that video down in the description below, of course. It's, it's worth checking out because it gives a certain perspective um, of how uh, free and open source games are seen. And I think today I would just like to share what I find in them, the warmth and comfort that I find in, in open source games. Because uh, a lot of people will look at an open source game and they'll 
uh, compare it to a proprietary counterpart, which I think is an unfair comparison. Uh, and, and people will insist on doing it nevertheless. And I think I've got to give head, um, credit to uh, Hamish the Polar Bear, another great, uh, mostly a Twitch streamer, st uh, streams uh, Linux games as well. I'll try and remember to put his link down in the description below. If I miss any, if I miss any of these links out, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll catch up. But uh, Hamish sort of basically made the, the sort of counter argument, the succinct counter argument, I know succinct, right? A uh, counter argument that, um, that I really sort of wanted to 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 crystallize, and he he beat me to the punch. So I've got to give him credit where it's due, which is that um, free and open source games are not a product, but something you buy on Steam or GOG or heaven forbid in the Epic Store. They are products, and that is a fundamental difference all through the core of that game's entire creation. It sort of goes back to what I was saying earlier about the fact that I feel so much more liberated now that I've demonetized my videos. YouTube can't touch me unless I do something really bad. Um, I don't care how many views a video gets. I don't care, um, you know, if I'm advertiser friendly or not. I get to actually be my unapologetic self and that and I get to make videos about things I genuinely care about, that not because they're popular, but because I care about them. And I think that there's an essence of that in free and open source games. So I'm, I'm going to sort of get to the crux of a lot of what Hex was saying with the uh, example that everyone goes to, which is Super Tux Kart. Uh, people say that Super Tux Kart is not as good as, as Mario Kart. So I'm going to, with the newer Mario Karts, and I'm not super familiar with them, I played them a few times before, I've got to admit I don't enjoy Mario Kart, especially the newer ones. The older ones I might have a bit more time for, but the newer ones I kind of feel are just a bit saccharine and overloaded, like, you know, that sort of sensory overload, and they're a bit, well, if I'm completely honest, childish like they're really i know a lot of people are going to not like or not like not not like but like are going to vehemently disagree with that but it they just strike me as 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 being more like like you drop a load of acid and then play a bop it you know it's 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 too much too much you know uh, and I think that they're just trying to appeal to kids that have had too much sugar. If I'm completely okay, all right, that's a bit, that's a bit, <laughs> that's a bit strong there. But you know what I mean? Like it's too much. And I like that Super Tux Kart is a little bit more. It's it's not for kids, right? You you don't you don't get like a ten year old kid that plays Fortnite and you put them in front of Super Tux Kart and say play this. It's just as good. No, that that ain't gonna stick, right? There's more to it than that. So. Things like Super Tux Kart, which are still being worked on, exist by definition because people want them to exist. That's not necessarily the same that can be said for a game. A game exists in many, or many games exist solely to make money. Now, there are some indie games uh, and even free games that are proprietary that exist, again, for the sole reason that they exist because people want them to exist. But undeniably, because there is no profit motive in free and open source games, they fundamentally exist because of the will of their creators and the the sort of benevolence there within. And I find that to be a sort of, a, a, well, I find a degree of touching poetry within that, to be honest. Now, also, one of the things is, is that actually free and open source games are not, um, they're not appreciated for being games, whereas a, a, a product is. And this is where Hamish's argument of, of the fact that you're comparing a product to a non-product, right? A free and open source game is not a product, but a, a game that you buy on Steam is a product. That's a fundamental difference. That's that's the entire difference. That's what makes it, right? And uh, there are going to be many people that either don't care or don't appreciate that difference. And that is completely fine. That is fine. I, I, I think that sometimes nowadays we... We have to think that if something doesn't appeal to a huge swathe of people that it's not worthwhile. And I don't think that's the case. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a small community that, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that degree of, uh, it's not necessarily exclusivity because free and open source games are open communities, but I don't think that there's anything wrong with having a small community that appreciates something in an entirely different capacity than uh, something else, you know, than, than, than people that play games. People that join open source communities don't, 
people that get involved in Super Tux Kart, they don't get involved with Super Tux Kart because they think it's the best game. They they involve themselves in Super Tux Kart because they enjoy the people that make up the community that bring us that game. There is something really wonderful about having a game from top to bottom where the community are involved in its, its creation. And that's why you tend to see a lot of open source games in certain genres and hardly any in others. Like, there are not very many... Uh, Open, free and open source games that have long single player campaigns because that requires a degree of authoritarian um, work, I guess, and commitment. Whereas, you know, and, and that's much more suited to a proprietary way of making games. It's much more suited because there are going to be like, sometimes you just need someone to sit at a desk and do a very boring job for eight hours, eight hours a day, five days a week, and just grind through making the most boring parts of a game. That's a lot more difficult to do on a voluntary basis. It's a lot more difficult to get people to do that when it comes to free and open source games because people want to contribute that to, to that project because they enjoy it. And when there are huge swathes of very boring work that have to be done, the best and in many ways only way to get it done is just to, to pay money. And obviously free and open source games do tend to lack money in that regard. So um, basically, uh, it, it, it makes sense that certain, you know, the, 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 the proprietary takes on the heavy lifting of a lot of um, a lot of types of games as well. Um, I don't think every game necessarily has to be proprietary. And I think a very good analogy, I think it was actually Drew that told me in a live stream, that the way that he sees it is that uh, the actual tangible, meaningful, um, pragmatic value that open source brings to the gaming world is not in your super tux carts, it's not in your, your mind tests or anything like that. It's in your blenders. Uh, it's in your your creators. It's in your you know. It's in the audacity programs. It's all it's in all these programs that people use to make games, but not um, but not necessarily the games themselves. So when you do a document on Libra Writer, for example, Libra Office Writer, you don't expect every document to be written in that in that program to be Creative Commons. Uh, you don't expect every video that's done in Caden Live to be a, a, a public domain or, or Creative Commons video. Um, you just want the the open source tools to level the playing field so that you can get people from all backgrounds involved in 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 creating stuff uh, i got to admit like when i the the door that opened to me in um to the free and open source world was because i couldn't afford proprietary software and i saw a community that that had a much more creative and positive solution to that um you know to the obstacles that i faced rather than just pirating um proprietary software like there was there were people that uh, and are people that are determined to actually um allow uh people from all kinds of disadvantages to actually um start creating and and, and start using computers in the way they want regardless of the financial cost now there are also other liberating aspects of free and open source software, but that's the one that got me on the ladder. And then I started, then more doors started opening up. And I believe that that's uh, similar to a lot of other people. This is why I get a little bit annoyed when people say that a lot of open source stuff isn't as accessible to a lot, you know, to, uh, as a lot of the proprietary stuff. Um, because accessibility, it's, it's, it, it depends, doesn't it? It's a very subjective and personal thing. For me, open source software has been and still is and seems to 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 to, to me uh, in all all current cases to be more accessible than proprietary counterparts so you know there might be cases where people find easier access to proprietary software a part of that might be because proprietary software has has you know has has you know money where a lot of open source projects don't it might very well be that marketing like the thing i know about uh, free and open source communities is that they don't like spending money on marketing it's one of the you know some of the most um successful open source projects that we've seen i'm thinking specifically now of wordpress they spend a lot of money on marketing because they're backed by a company now speaking of that um not all open source software is created equal right because wordpress is open source um and and it's uh, backed by a company, but you're not going to see many Libra free and open source games backed by a company. So, for example, if the next Fortnite was backed by a massive company um, and they just released the source code, but they made money on something to do with servers or whatever, they made money through maybe 
uh, something else, like they sold hats or, or something like that. So they had, the, you know, they, they open sourced the basic base game, and then they might have had some like proprietary mods or whatever that you could buy and install. Let's just, you know, use that as an example. Uh, I still wouldn't appreciate, I would still, in essence, in spirit, consider that proprietary because one of the things about Libra games is this degree of self determination, to borrow a phrase. Uh, is it for the people, by the people, of the people? Sorry, I'm not American. I don't, but you know, it's it's it, it is that kind of thing. Uh, whereas with a, a product, a proprietary game, you get what you're given. You get a choice of, you know, very obviously a huge selection of games, but you still, at the end of the day, you get what you're given. Um, whereas with with free and open source games, you you, you are part of a, a community. And that includes the developers of the game. That includes everyone that's had anything to do with the game. Uh, it has. It's this. You know. It, it. It's that community angle that, to me, makes everything about it. And I. I and I see a lot of. I. I see a lot of. Um, uh, what's what? What am I trying to put? How am I trying to put this now? Uh, the, the communities in free and open source gaming do not have a lot of the baggage that you see with a lot of commun gaming communities in. Uh, in the proprietary world. Now there are plenty of exceptions to this, but I do find on the whole that gamers that support free and open source games um, seem to be seem to be communities that I'd much rather be involved in. They seem to it, it is very much d difficult to describe, but it, but when you're in that community, you know, it feels that like everyone's pulling in the same direction. Everything someone's, you know, uh, someone's got something to uh, everyone's got sort of something to offer in a lot of cases. I mean, some people are just dead weight in any given circumstance, but uh, it just seems to be that it 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 just feels like a more empowered community, a community that appreciates the the community in and of itself whereas with with games and products you just you're all fans of this one thing whereas with free and open source gaming communities you are part of this thing it's the fundamental difference that the make you know that makes it for me um so I, I, and i do you know like i like i say there are some games that i just outright prefer and maybe that's because i have peculiar <laughs> preferences i guess in that regard um and I think as well, when it comes to something like Mine Test, which is often uh, talked about side by side with Minecraft, I I really like Mine Test. I spend probably more time on Mine Test than I do on any uh, other open source game. And in fact, Hex himself has put together a really good Mine Test server. And Mine Test, in my opinion, is much more accessible than Minecraft for a whole host of reasons. The first being that Mine Test runs on much slower machines, on much more different hardware. You can play Mine Test on uh, on Android. You can play it in the uh, F Droid Store or just on the Google Play Store. Uh, you can play it on really, really, really old computers. Uh, you can, um, and of course, you can play it on, on newer computers. It's available on on more platforms. It's a, uh, it's 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 free as well like i mean i know a lot of people once they've bought the minecraft game that's it but to a lot of people that's an expense that they would have trouble with in a lot of cases i think that's uh, in a lot you know uh, underappreciated if i'm completely honest um you know i i'm financially speaking i'm doing a lot better now than i have been years ago uh, but um uh, and years ago, things like you know expenses like Mine Test was something, or Minecraft, you know, expenses on on games like that, they would have been noticeable. They would have been, you know, it's uh, it it does it does factor into a lot of people. And I know a lot of people probably earn so much that it, that's that's a difficult position to see eye to eye with. But it's uh, for 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 a lot of people, it is the reality. But uh, and and again, like I say, free and open source stuff opened a lot of doors for me years ago, and um, I, I do kind of feel a bit indebted for that. And um, and the trouble is with with these kinds of um, uh, sort of arguments is that they are emotional. They are uh, deep down all about our feelings. And I know that's not a very popular thing to do on the internet now nowadays is to predicate a uh, an argument based on on feelings. But but that's what art does. That's what games do. They make us feel. They they make us care about things and they make us experience emotions another very unpopular thing it seems to want to express on the internet nowadays but it is i find it very endearing um the communities that get built around free and open source software um and free and open source games whereas uh when it's with a lot of proprietary games you just get groups of fans that's a huge difference and i don't know if it's lost on a lot of people or whether a lot of people have lost touch with with the more deeper essence of 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 community bonding, but um, 
And, and, and that kind of stuff means more to me than maybe it did when I was a bit younger as well. Um, you know, maybe nowadays when I when I'm sort of getting a bit older, and I'm you know when 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 sort of your social life isn't delivered to you on a silver. When I was at university, man, we were going out partying every night. It was you know you couldn't move for a good time. Lots of friends, lots of you know there's always something going on. Um, but nowadays, you know, most of my friends are mar married or moved out of the country, and. I guess, you know, the social connections that I do have, I value so much more because I realize how much work has to go into, you know, relationships and, and community, you know, groups and all that kind of stuff that, you know, stuff like this, in my my opinion, is worth holding on to. And maybe a lot of people don't see that. Maybe a lot of people don't experience that. And that's fine. But it's, um, but, but when I see people get passionate, sincerely passionate about something, it doesn't matter to me whether or not it's flashy or good or whether or not some company can do it better. Um, it's, you know, it, 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 it means it means so much to me that um, uh, that that the people work together doing it. Um, and I'm sort of maybe showing a little bit too many, you know, sharing a little bit, being a little bit too personal here. But when I was when I was younger, I never liked comic book heroes. I never liked the concept of a hero anyway. Like, I never thought that, oh, there's this big problem. Uh, some some dude who wears his pants on the outside of his trousers is going to come and save the day. Like, to me, I found that idea completely um, I, 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 unconnectable, right? My favorite stories as a kid were Robin Hood and his Merry Men, right? Where, like, they were all a team, you know, they're a team of people. And actually, more explicitly, one of my favorite stories, which was uh, a, it was a, sort of a, a book that I read about the Great Escape. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are, are going to be familiar with it. I'm sure it's a it's a it's a it's a very well known film, isn't it? The Great Escape, the one with Steve McQueen, and they escaped from a prisoner of war camp in Germany uh, during the Second World War. And um, and it's 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 such. A, a beautiful film, and it's in the book that that it's it's from, or the you know the the, the book of the the that event, um, meant uh, so much to me as a kid because it, um, it made me feel okay to be a nerd, right? It made me feel okay that you're not the the toughest guy in school or whatever, because in order for this plan for them to escape from this prisoner of war camp to work, you needed people from all kinds of backgrounds. Yeah, you had the big, tough, burly men, they were digging the tunnel, but you also had the guy that was really good at sewing, and he made the uniforms, and you had the guy that was really good at uh, at, at forging, and he made all the passports and all the, all the train tickets, and then you had the guys that befriended the guards, and they made friends with the guards, and they got like a, you know, sort of uh, traded cigarettes and all that kind of stuff, and um, and you had people that were like, you know, good sneak, you know, thieves and all that kind of stuff that went out and nicked stuff. And you had people that caused chaos amongst the, um, you know, a, to, as a distraction. All this kind of, like the thing is about that that team that escaped from the prisoner of war camp. It was like there was a space for everyone. It didn't matter if you were different. Being different was good. Being a bit, you know, like you, not everyone had to be that same kind of model of masculinity or that model of of whatever it is that you know that the, the, that's the uh, the trend of the day. Like it's it's okay to 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 have a bit of variety in in your skill sets and your character and your personality. And I guess uh, and and so. To me, I always saw that that is essential value in a, in a community, in a group of people that set out to do something, and um, and I guess I see a little bit that of that in free and open source games. Like it's just you know quirky communities of people that have lots of different sort of lots of different backgrounds, lots of different skills, lots of different you know. It's all a bit, it's all a bit you know kooky and weird, and that's amazing. It's wonderful, um, and I know a lot of people don't care for that in, in in games anyway like but some people just want to buy a good game off the off the rack and play it and have a good time and that's perfectly fine as well like i think that the tangible meaningful value for the world in a free and open source gaming is in your, the tools that they use to make the game your blenders your audacities your caden lives all that kind of stuff like that to me is um you know that that's something that that you can you can tangibly say is a good contribution to the wider world in regards to software but for some of us that are you know, that, that are looking for something else, then I think free and open source games have a lot to uh, have a lot to say for. I mean, I gotta be honest. I I was thinking from for like, and I, I'm only shooting from the hip here. I don't know if I'll ever go through with this, of having a playing a having a month where I just play free and open source games on stream, just on Twitch, right? 
I ain't going to get many followers, subscribers, social media clout for it or anything like that. But um, it, it 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 would be kind of good just to to sort of you know reconnect a bit more deeply with those communities um, or connect in, in communities that I haven't previously connected in before, and um, and just shine a bit of a spotlight on um, on a lot of games that that um, uh, that, that I feel are, are are particularly you know great in this regard. Um, it's uh, it's something I've chewed over. Um, I would like to come up with a clever name for the month, uh, but I haven't yet come up with one. <laughs> um, and I also another idea I had, but again, I'm just sort of um, just sort of running my mouth now at this stage. Is having a, a Libra Games console, and um, it would just be a small box. I'd get like a second hand. Maybe it would be like a ThinkPad or a laptop, so you'd have it all built as a single unit type thing. Um, and you just have an, an operating system. I would have maybe the GNOME desktop if I could get a laptop fast enough for it. And just, you know, have a stack of um, of, uh, of of Libra games on it and just have that as a... I mean, it's a console, um, but because so many free and open source games really do run best on mouse and keyboard, it would be a sort of a laptop dedicated to it really more over anything else. Um, but uh, but but if it, I, I would call it the free uh, just the, the FOSS console, you know, uh, the Libra box. I don't know. It just I don't know. It's a quirky idea that I think is quite amusing, really. So uh, anyway, that's. Ju I just thought I'd run my mouth a little bit on what what I appreciate. Uh, to be honest, I I don't think um, that the the arguments I bring are going to convict convince Hex and, and Drew. Um, and and to be honest, actually though, um, the community that we've built up on the, on the mind test server. In on on Hex's mind test server, I mean that in an, it kind of is a, a bit of the reason why I see, I see in it, and and we've built some really good stuff. So if you wanna, I'll I'll try and stream some of that at some point to uh, to check it out. But um, but really, sort of fundamentally speaking, um, it's it's kind of okay that not everyone is into the FOSS games because they're not for everyone. Not everything has to... That's the beauty of free and open source software is that it's not all predicated on its popularity, whereas a lot of proprietary software is. Like, if it doesn't sell enough copies, it gets in trouble. It might get pulled from Steam. It might not get a sequel. But the fact of the matter is, with FOSS games, they exist because people want them to exist. Um, they don't exist without that hardcore following the super fans and that's and and that by its very definition makes it makes them uh, stronger games from from a community point of view and and, and quite frankly I, I see them as very creative and constructive communities and to be honest and and I'm sure I'm going to get some disagreement on this that um I find there's a lot less toxicity in in the free and open source gaming communities uh, that you do tend to find certainly in the bigger communities. Obviously, I'm very generalizing here, and that's something that I really shouldn't do because there are certain gaming communities that are actually really, really, you know, kind-hearted, constructive, and beautiful in their own ways. So I don't want to necessarily uh, overgeneralize there. Um, there are certainly some, but but when it comes to um, free and open source games, you know, because because of of their their nature, because of the the way that they're created and exist, and 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 I think that there is a space for a game that's never finished. Some games aren't finished. I don't, you know, I, I hope that Mind Test will never be finished. I hope that Open uh, Open MW will never be finished. Or, or finished, although you can sort of argue whether or not that's truly an open source game, given that it's just a rewrite of the engine, a beautiful rewrite of the engine, wonderful. But um, you know, they they do talk about various different categories. I think they they come up with like four different categories of of free and open source games. They are the um, the full and outright clone of a game, right? So you've got, for example, um, you could say like Mind Test is a mi clone of Minecraft, although that's not entirely true. Or like Free Doom is a clone of Doom and all that kind of stuff. Then you've got um, the rewrite of the engine, which is your your open MWs, where you do require the original game files, but you've got this, un you know, you, you've got a rewrite of the underlying engine. Um, and then you've got the... Um, then you've got the uh, the original game idea completely in and of itself, uh, which um, and and then what? Uh, there was another one. I can't. I, I, they're, they're, anyway, I mean, hey, they they ramble a lot longer than this video is going to be. This video is coming up to half an hour now. I'm probably going to wrap it up. But anyway, yeah, there's there's like you know like uh, some some not all free and open source games are um, are all all one and the same, and they're not. You know, it's it's not fair to to sort of think of something like mind test in the same uh it, you know in the same classification as as open mw or something like that um 
but all things considered um I, it, you know it is something that i dip back into from time to time i mean the current state of gaming on on linux is pretty wonderful these days with proton um i i we can play thousands upon thousands upon basically if no new games came out i'd be more than happy but then again i've always said to myself that if um the only games i could ever play going going forward would be the games that were available in you know like the distro repositories i think i would be fine with that i would certainly suffer a blow to some of my favorite games but um but i i still feel that that would be a that would be tolerable if i'm completely honest but then again I, I have different expectations of games i have different tastes and that's all subjective and again that's all fine i just wanted to put my um my two cents out there because um well i felt like a bit of a ramble if i'm a bit honest anyway guys uh thank you very much for joining me if you guys want to catch um me doing my podcast which is a lot of fun it's project chronicle that's the youtube channel i'll put a link to it down in the description as well as um my twitch channel which is also mirrored across on my game uh, uh, which is also mirrored across on my gaming channel here on youtube so live streams on both and also hexes and hamish's um social media stuff as well because they are worth following um and they're uh, they're all good chaps as well um i don't think drew likes people so i you know so 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 there we go i don't know i maybe i'm wrong <laughs> but um but he, he he doesn't okay anyway thank you very much for joining me that's about it for me today i'm going to do my standard you know rounding off and um and uh, yeah until next time i've been chris ware and there's the stop recording button because i'm not going to edit this video you've been awesome toodaloo